How you guys doing? Um, I thought that I would do another book haul, a library haul, since so many people left comments in my last video, and thank you very much. That made me happy to see that people still watch my videos and are still thinking of me, so appreciate that. I do miss you guys. Uh, like I left in someone's comment, I just have been not motivated at all to do book videos, but anyways, um, all those comments helped me, so <laughs> it helped to uh, put a little into me, if you will. So I went to the library today. These books I put on hold a while ago and they just came in. One or two of them I may not read now, but we'll see just because, you know, my mood changes all the time and back when I put them on hold I wanted to read them and maybe now I just don't feel like it. So after I show you these four books, I did get a bunch of movies and I'll show you those too just to make the video. I don't know. I just want to show you, I guess. So if you don't want to see the videos, you can cut it off after the books. So the first book is by Robin Wasserman, the book of Blood and Shadow. And this cover is really neat. I love that. And I'll go ahead and read the inside of you. Oh, and in her eye, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see that, but in her eye is like a castle or something. Actually, it's this. And the edges are deckled, which is really cool. Nora's best friend Chris is dead. His girlfriend Adrian is catatonic, and Max, Nora's sweet, smart, soft-spoken Prince Charming, is gone. He is also, according to the police, according to her parents, according to everyone, a murderer. Desperate to prove his innocence, Nora follows the trail of blood, wherever it leads. It ultimately brings her to the ancient streets of Prague, where she is drawn into a dark web of secret societies and shadowy conspirators. I don't know how to pronounce that. That just doesn't sound, sound right. All driven by a mad desire to possess something that might not even exist. For buried in a centuries-old manuscript is the secret to ultimate knowledge and communion with the divine. It is said that he who controls the lumen die controls the world, and unbeknownst to her, Nora now holds the crucial key to unlocking its secrets. Her night of blood is just one piece in a puzzle that spans continent, continents and centuries. Solving it may be the only way she can save her own life. It sounds good. I'm just not sure if it's for me right now. I don't know. Um, this is the word. So the words are big. But I just don't know if I feel like going to other countries right now. So the next one I got is Kath Crowley, Graffiti Moon. Another cool cover. This one says, Senior year is over and Lucy has the perfect way to celebrate. Tonight she's going to find Shadow, the mysterious graffiti artist whose work appears all over the city. Somewhere in the glassy darkness, he's out there, spraying color, spraying birds, and blue sky in the night. And Lucy knows that a guy who paints like Shadow is someone she could fall for. Really fall for. The last person Lucy wants to spend this night with is Ed, the guy she's managed to avoid since punching him in the nose on the most awkward date of her life. But when Ed tells Lucy he knows where to find Shadow, the two of them are suddenly on an all-night search to places where Shadow's pieces of heartbreak and escape echo off the city walls. And what Lucy can't see is the one thing that's right before her eyes. From Kath Crowley comes an exhilarating adventure set against a moonlit cityscape, one night of art and poetry, humor and longing, anticipation and risk, and maybe love. Another book that I was really excited to read, but I don't know if I want to read about love. The words are huge in this book, too. But I'll start reading it. We'll see where it takes me. The next one I am excited to read, it's The Girl in the Park by Mariah Fredericks. Another very cool cover. And this one <coughs> says, When Wendy Geller's body is found in New York Central Park the morning after a rager, newspaper headlines scream, Who was Wendy Geller? Life of a party girl ends in violence. But Rain, once Wendy's best friend, knows Wendy wasn't just another wild girl from an elite prep school. Wendy was the girl with the great smile and the huge heart. The girl who ate unbaked cookie dough. The dough rocks raw, am I right? and faked a fainting spell in H&M as a prank, who told quiet Rain not to be afraid to share her thoughts with the world. As Rain struggles to separate the girl she knew from the tangle of headlines and vicious gossip, she becomes determined to discover who killed her friend. But if Rain, always a listener, a bystander, really wants to help Wendy, she knows she'll have to speak up. So that sounds interesting to me. Another one with big words. And then this one I think Mia might like. It's called Starters. It's by Liza Price. Liza Price. Another cool cover. Um, very cool cover. 
And this one I might like too. Kaylee lost her parents when the Spore Wars wiped out everyone between the ages of 20 and 60. She and her little brother Tyler are on the run, living as squatters with their friend Michael and fighting off renegades who would kill them for a cookie. Kaylee's only hope is Prime Destinations, a disturbing place in Beverly Hills run by a mysterious figure known as the Old Man. He hires teens to rent their bodies to enders, seniors who want to be young again. Kaylee, desperate for the money that will keep her, Tyler, and Michael alive, agrees to be a donor. But the narrow chip they place in Kaylee's head malfunctions, and she wakes up in the life of a runner, living in her mansion, driving her cars, and going out with the senator's grandson. It feels almost like a fairy tale until Kelly discovers that a renter intends to do more than party, and that Prime Destination's plans are more evil than Kelly could ever have imagined. So that really sounds good to me. Um, the words are average, but I think Mia might like this book too. So those are the four books I got today. I did finish, um, I finished Love Hurts, uh, the true crime book by Keith Elliott Greenberg. It's about the girl, 16-year-old girl who, her parents are really Christian and they want her to break up with her boyfriend because they don't approve of him. And out of retaliation, she talks the boyfriend into killing her parents and along with her parents, her two little brothers. And, God, um, the only thing I didn't care for about this book is there wasn't a whole lot about the girl and the boyfriend, about, like, how their relationship was. Um, it sounds like he obviously was deeply in love with her and would do anything for her. He was older. He was 18. Um, but there wasn't any stories, any history with them, um... But I'm reading this, and I've always read true crime books, and it's just like, you know, I grew up with an abusive mother, and always, and not once did that thought ever randomly or anywhere near cross my head about killing my mom, um, or my parents. I mean, oh my gosh, over a boy, the things that kids kill for, it's just gotten horrible, and it's ridiculous, and it's scary. Yeah. So that's that. Um, the movies, I'm not going to tell you what they're about. I'm just going to rush through them because I think my camera's going to die. Uh, Paranoid Park. And I do love movies that are the IFC films, in independent films. So i got Paranoid Park, Nights and Weekends, uh, Mammoth. Uh, I'm trying to find the IFC films I got. Uh, Hannah Takes the Stairs. And Inhale. I get all those for a week. Um, then I got Lifetime Movie. I love Lifetime Movies. I got Prayers for Bobby. If you want to know what any of those are about, you can go below them. Um, and then this is just a, like a horror movie. This is Bug with Ashley Judd. I don't think I've ever seen it. So I'm excited to see that. And then two new releases. Uh, Take Shelter. This is with Michael Shannon and Jessica Chastain. Chastain. And this came out... It says June. It's not June yet. This came out a couple months ago, I believe. Everything Must Go with Will Ferrell. I haven't seen it yet. But those two are due back Tuesday before they open. So, But that's it. So today's a gloomy, shitty, crappy day. Excuse me for my, if I have any younger viewers. Crappy day. And uh, so I'm going to spend it in bed reading and going through movies. So, all right, I will talk to you guys later. Oh, book I'm going to read next. I'm still reading that 8-Ball Chick book. And maybe I'll read one of the books I just got from the library. So, all right, see you later. Bye.